very clever. Oh. These Americans. <laughs> 109,000 is selling. He looked back. We're, we're so Sorry. clever. China owns half of us. Okay. <laughs> Barry's <laughs> rambling. What, what are you rambling about? What's going on? Because I didn't know I'm going to hear from you guys or not. So I log in and say, hi, guys, I'm here. You, your call comes in. So I said, hey, very, very clever. These Americans. Hey, oh, yeah. uh, how how was how uh, you guys doing? Good. How was yeah. your how was your Thanksgiving? I gotta tell you something. I know you guys are in Detroit. Uh, it's gonna be a little rub. Temperatures were in mild eighties. Yeah. Come on, eighties. Sunny. Eh? Wow. Yeah, we have one day of rain, and somebody complained you brought the rain. I said, excuse me, I didn't do anything. So. And now. I don't even- think we saw the 80s in Detroit all year. Did we even see the 80s this summer in Detroit? Oh, yeah, was a lot did. of days in the we, 80s. We, we baked a few days, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we got hot. Yeah, but, but what, uh, you, what was your temperature on Thanksgiving, please? Uh, let's be relative, like Sigma channels. Tell me what was your temperature in Thanksgiving. I was out running in the turkey trot, and it must have been right around 30 degrees. Holy macro. Yeah, well. And, uh, it, well, it, my next stop is Florida. I made that decision. So. Okay, Rob Hood uh, had the same thing on my mind. And uh, did you? How, how's your sister doing? The one that uh, you know got mad at you about the the Netflix sale? Did she attend the uh, festivities uh, for Thanksgiving? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, she's my little sister. Remember, she's my little sister. So she always she always be very nice and all that. It's just that she's actually trying to make up because remember, for three hundred from two sixty, when I got her out of the longs, it went to three hundred. She was upset how it didn't capture, capture the last 10%. Well, since then, we've gone to three, 100 down and then 400. She completely stayed out because I didn't even call for a while. At 100, she came up with a white flag, you know, the surrender. Because, you know, she knew she was wrong. But it was just an emotional thing. You know, remember, where women nest, men hunt. So she's out there grabbing every shekels. I'm looking at the ES handles. So, okay. All right. Speaking yeah, yeah. of ES handle, where are we at in Sigma Channel Land in this space? Oh, okay. As of last night, remember, I have a little bit of jet lag. Got in here late last night, but here are the charts are on Hawkeye. Uh, on the Sigma channels, on a daily of SPX, we're back to uh, one Sigma. The day before, we hit zero Sigma. So we took some pressure off. Uh, the uh, the McConnell uh, is negative five. Uh, it has uh, came down, came down, came down constantly. Since the peak it put in, hold on one second, let me get to this side, uh, on the 31st, on October 31st. So all of November, it tracked down into yesterday, I'm sorry, day before yesterday, and then pulled up a tad yesterday. Um, we all, and during this time, of course, it made new all-time, uh, new, new all-time highs, but it never exceeded plus two sigma. And so, uh, which is typical. On SPX, you see, because of all averages, it has a tendency to try to get to plus two and kind of lose the steam. On the downside, the fear gets a little bit bigger. We go past negative two, and often we hit negative three. That was the case in the week that we had uh, October 15th as a Wednesday. So that's the Friday before, the Monday, and the uh, third uh, Wednesday. They all hit three sigmas. But of course, the three sigma of that day had the shape of a hammer. So remember, it's not one indicator, it's not one reading, but it's a preponderance of evidence. When it goes to a hammer at three sigma, yeah, yeah that's uh, that. And now, other indicators will begin to pull up already. Like SIG, CI, CI was pulling up. And that's the value of a good indicator, to turn before the price. Price pays, but the good indicator tells you what to anticipate and what to do. So what are your good indicators looking at right now? You got some individual picks for us there, Fari? I just got here. Uh, I have jet lag and jet blue. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, listen. First of all, I came in on the Southwest. Love, okay? The, 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 the one thing, you can get two bags. That's nice. Free. The other thing, service is not all that good because they, they didn't ever use carts. So they're like a restaurant. Who was it? Love, L-U-V, oh, Southwest. Okay. Yeah. Okay, L-U, yeah. Okay, great company, great attitude, uh, number of old-timers hang around because of their stock split and so forth. Remember, when splits are good, people hang around. When you have reverse split, they, 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 they jump out on the chute. So here, uh, but the one issue, service is horrible. Why? They're like restaurants. They take orders. They go back and forth. There's no cart. 
So there's not one pass and serve everybody. It, you know, I think we we took off. We, we went to Auckland, L.A. Auckland uh, Midway. I think we must have passed Denver before they got a chance to get us orange juice. I mean, so. But aside from that, I think I bring airlines up. Look at what's happening to jet fuel. Look, we are our indicator MAC Mac. We say BYOC. Bring your own cheese. It's Mac, but you have to bring your own cheese. We're throwing some JP5, which is a fuel for the Navy these days. We're throwing a lot of JP5. Why? Look at the jet fuel. Jet fuel is down heavy. And if these guys had some hedges on, obviously, uh, they, they, on the upside, they were protected, but they must be doing really well on the downside uh, to their advantage. And they're probably taking much lower hedges on for forward, you know, for future prices and uh, much cheaper. So I think I would like airlines here. Uh, Love would be one of them. Uh, jet Blue would be another one. Uh, and, you know, I think UA has been... UA has been kind of outperforming recently. Now, I'm not, like Gecko, I'm not all that crazy about airlines uh, because of fuel costs and unions. So, uh, but uh, right now, I think given uh, what's happening, the disarray we saw at OPEC, which we talked about, I said, you know, OPEC is not going to be the situation to agree and uh, uh, get, uh, get, get, get an agreement on pricing. Okay, and they didn't. You know, I and, and, and the price is going to push a little bit lower and probably stay lower. I'm sorry, Joel. Go no, ahead. no, Dennis was giving you some kudos uh, when you were gone last week about uh, you know calling for sixty five dollar crude when I believe sixty. 60. You called sixty. Sixty. 60. 60. 60. And I got a new price for you. Fifty six you now. Fifty six. Yes. Dropping yeah. your price target. Fifty six yeah. bucks as Fari Hamzy. I've told everybody when it was up at seventy four. I said every my buddy Fari is telling everybody it's going to sixty, and Fari is solid, and that's why I'm not buying oil stocks. And boom, look at that. Three, four, just like the next week, the things trade. What do you mean you're 70. not buying a stock? You should be buying some puts. I should have been buying puts. Joel, where would you find this puts. guy, Joel? <laughs> <laughs> No. I got a profit from that. I should have been just flat out short in all the oil stocks. Yeah. That was the call. Well, that was one of the best calls you've had on this show ever, Fari. You were all over that's that. That's it? That's it? Okay. Right. That was a good, no, that was a, well, that was a real good one. You called oil, and it drops 10% in a week. It I was 92 when I called it. It was Labor Day when I called it. Day after Labor Day. It was 92. Wow. Oh, right. I was here at 67.75 on Thanksgiving. I don't know what happened since then. I mean, I, I see it at 67 now. I don't know what the... Uh, you know, contract lowers on this leg, you know, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. We'll see. L listen, all I know is, uh, 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 Putin is looking for new furniture and draperies for his dacha near Sochi, because I think the oligarchs will set up a, 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 a bloodless coup in Kremlin shortly. He reminds me of Khrushchev. Nikita Khrushchev. Nikita Khrushchev. T Boone Pickens was on CNBC yesterday. Uh -huh. and he said he's, he's, he sees a hundred dollar oil within twelve to eighteen months. Do you agree with T Boone Pickens? Is it eventually going to come back? At uh, I don't know if I see a hundred immediately that fast. These sort of things don't move that easily, and when they do, they're fairly uh, secular in in a way, mini secular moves, if you will. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I don't know if he does, but I mean, of course, I have to respect him. I follow him on Twitter. I've, 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 I've traded uh, some of the stocks he was in and M&A in the 80s and 90s as a, not, I'm sorry, not a trade, invested on m and things like that. I've made a lot of money off of Tibun as a sharp cookie in that area. I respect him. He was one of the first guys who came and said, if we get more gas out of the ground, we'll change this ball game like six years ago. Why at uh, when Obama was coming in? We can change the our dependency on the Middle Eastern oil. And everybody thought, hey, what is the he, uh, you know, maybe he he he's uh, uh, you know, inhaling some of that uh, uh, gas himself. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, people said a lot of stuff for him. I sat there, I said, you know what? He, he, you know, he maybe and he at that time he was pitching for some sort of a, a government-backed policy, especially on, remember on trucks, put the trucks on gas, on natural gas. Uh, especially in the Midwest corridor, you know, it would be a big, big difference because that's a heartland. Um, but I, um, I don't know if I want to bet against T-Boone, let me put it this way. Uh, but um, 100 seems to be, mm, maybe, I don't know. 
Well, I just uh, think 18 you're, months yeah. is a long time from now. Lots you don't happen. care about 18 months from now. You care about what's happening in the next few weeks, and you still think oil's treading lower. And when do you think 56? You're saying 56. What's your timeline for that? I, I, I hope we see 56 before year end. Before year end. So you're thinking Yeah, because month. once you get here, you get what's called the, uh, the uh, flag patterns. You, know, you come down sharp, then you have a little reaction by and then it rolls over. The roll is a big move. So uh, that, that could be the low. Uh, that has nothing to do with what you're trading. That's just psychology, my friend. Uh, it's just sentiment. It's fear and greed. We're getting uh, some questions here. Uh, you know, we're talking about Russia and the oil prices. And uh, Rob Hood is chiming in here. You know, what happens to Russia if, uh, you know, it goes down to those prices? And also, sp- well, right, we have to look at their budget. The, the break even uh, of uh, price of oil, I mean, the break even for their budget. Okay, not their cost getting out of the ground. Remember, these guys have thrown in a lot of social programs. That's what Putin has got 90% uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, approval rate. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the Uber guys I took from, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, from Woodland Hills to Orange County, which was like an hour and a half drive, was Russian. What a lecture he gave me about how proud of Putin he is. I said, well, why don't you go back while you're here? <laughs> what, of course, what, he didn't what, have an answer for that. But um, yeah, the, 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 I believe the budget, uh, to balance the budget for Kremlin, the break even is 102 or 107, okay? For Iran, is 143. So these guys are in the tight spot and the screws being tightened on them, even worse. Uh, why? You have technical sanctions, and now you have lower income. That combo is deadly. And I, I think that's coming from Obama. He's not a great guy in execution, but the policy won't. I believe, I still believe, there's no proof, there's no documentation, there's no uh, second uh, signal on that, but maybe one day it'll come out that he had a deal with the House of Saud to flush the market temporarily. And his thing is, hey, I, I'm not touching fracking. That's not, we don't have government policy. There's no energy policy here. There's an independence. And unlike other countries, there's a difference. The, the mineral rights below ground belongs to the owner, where in overseas, most countries, it's limited to, I believe, 200 meters. The first 200 meters is yours. The rest belongs to, as a national treasure. So if you find land, oh, it's not yours. It belongs to the government. Here's different. You know, we have uh, leases. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, the only way against that is for prices to adjust. What about uh, uh, what about uh, Putin's or you know uh, orders to dump the U.S. dollar here? A little economic warfare. Is he just uh, grasping his straws yeah. here? Yeah. Look, the the flight of capital has been so bad already. The the big dollars were in there already left. Rubles down thirty percent. These are the last gasps, in my, my opinion. Uh, Again, it comes from the years of reading the tea leaves. What? Okay, another one. It's I guess it's Give Fari Credit Day here. Uh, Twitter. I mean, you've been going back and forth a little bit on this one. Uh, broke down yesterday. Actually, Dennis was talking. Well, we back and forth. I was long the uh, uh, Q two. That's ages ago, my Bro- friend. That light year. Light, this light years ago. Now you had you took out. But recently, the- I was short. I said, look, you you gotta be. I mean, my bias was. I didn't trade it. I said, I I'm, I will buy it cheaper. Remember, remember, Murray. Yep. Murray doesn't want to pay too much, so Murray waits for it to price to come down, and then he buys it. Nothing and, wrong with that. Uh, what about the? You know, you took out the low of the move yesterday, went down to thirty-eight, thirty-three, and now you backed up. You know, you got back above that old low, trading a little bit here in the pre-market. You, you see a little bit of bounce here for Twitter. Or you still? Uh-huh. I remember you were talking that that thirty-four to thirty-six area. Is that still what you're targeting as a long area? Uh-huh. I'm going to go there right now. I'm just switching a second. Okay. I mean, give me, give me it. I want to try getting a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, daily looks a little bit tight. Yeah. To me, uh, the weekly is still heading down. Okay. The daily, which, uh, yeah, the, the pre market is noise. Uh, unless there's a huge volume. I just don't see it yet. But on the daily, we're beginning to get into negative one, negative two, cha- two channel, my friend. We, I don't think we're done yet. We'll have, we should have at least one more pressure down. Uh, here, let me give you a target to watch for. Just you, such just because you're such a good boy. Hold on. Uh, try for thirty-seven fifty. Thirty-seven. So about thirty-seven. Okay. Look about. Look okay. about that. Yeah. 
Uh, so I don't think we're done yet. I, I don't see it yet, but maybe we are. But uh, you know, remember, this baby has been coming down quite a bit. So I'm going to throw uh, in a, a symbol here. I don't think we've ever uh, discussed with you here, and it's been yes, just on yes, a, just been on an incredible march here. Warren's huh? Company, Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, look Stop at again. this thing. Holy mackerel. Trading mm-hmm. up in the pre-market, 51 cents. I mean, Warren seems to be getting everything right as opposed to your buddy uh, Carl Icahn with his IEP. Uh-huh. That's been going anywhere. Uh-huh. What do you think? I mean, this has got to be kind of – I bet you it's out five or six Sigma channels here at this one. What, what is this, the, the, the dot A or dot B? You I, I'm looking at the B. Yep, I'm looking at the B. The same chart. Yeah, I just. Oh, B- yeah. Okay, BRK. B- hold on, I was looking at A. Okay. Hold on. I mean, you got to be out uh, there. In I'm not com- huh? Oh, I'm saying say BRK. See, I still have that little jet lag. Hold on one second. There you go. All right. Here it comes. Hey, yes, exactly. Uh, one trade at one fifty thirty eight right now, right? Okay. Yeah. If you look at uh, monthly, we're really, really pushing it at two sigma. The weekly is under two, uh, two sigma. I'm saying, yeah, two sigma, almost touching it. So it is overextended. But here's the thing. The CI is red, and the slope is positive. Okay. On the weekly. As long as that's holding, I don't want to go out there and take a short here. But it could be setting itself up as a possible target. I see it at least to get 152 on a daily. So I'm now focusing in. 152. Um, you may want to put a, put a spread on. Once it, it, it kind of uh, trades at 152 for a day or so, and then I would look up for like a five-point drop, six-point drop. Okay. Wow, that'd be a big move in that. We need the market to go yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Um, Remember, these things don't trade as much. The volume is little. The value is a lot. So uh, especially the, the dot A, dot A. I remember I talked to his, uh, uh, I, uh, talk to, to his uh, specialist on the floor. I forget the name of the guy. He's an older, older, uh, old, old school guy there. He goes, uh, I'm lucky to trade 300 shares a day. And every time the spread gets a little bit too wide, Warren himself calls me. He said, what do you do with the spread? Make it smaller. I said, Warren, I got to make money. I only sell 300 shares all day. Come on. <laughs> He's got shekels that he needs for Sabbath. Come on. All right. We've been on the line with Fari Hamzy of Hamzy Analytics. He joins us just about every Wednesday. He took a day off last week for vacation, so that that's okay. But Fari... Glad to have you back uh, on the show. Great comments. Uh, let you get back into the groove, and uh, we'll be touching base with you next Wednesday. Yeah, next Wednesday I'll have more ideas for you guys. Uh, you have to have more into what's going on and get some actually individual stock names that you guys like to. Uh, pleasure to t- chat with both of you. Good trading today. Okay. Thanks, Barry. All right, bye.